Yeah, hello DEFCON. We have only 20 minutes, so let's get started. Uh, my today's talk is Electronizing macOS Privacy, a new weapon in your red teaming armory. My name is Wojciech Reguła, and I'm a head of mobile security at Securing, uh, where I'm mostly focused on macOS and iOS application security. In my free time, I run a blog, wojciechreguła.blog, which is, of course, about Apple security. Mm, and somebody of you may also know me from iOS Security Suite that I'm a creator of. It's a free and open source Swift library that helps developers make sure that their applications on, on, are run on secure iPhones. And recently, I'm also engaged in macOS environment security assessments. Uh, so the plan for today's talk uh, is that at first, I'm going to introduce you to TCC and privacy fundamentals on macOS. That will be a really quick introduction. And then we're going to start talking about uh, two problems. Uh, the first problem is with Electron applications, uh, then uh, the problem with TCC in general. And as a mm, conclusion of those two problems, I'm going to show you my new tool that's Electronizer, and it will be released shortly after, after my talk. So um, watch my Twitter and, and LinkedIn. And at the end, because I'm releasing a new tool that helps red teaming uh, exploitation, I will also uh, say something about detections. Uh, yeah, so let's start from the TCC and privacy fundamentals. Uh, yesterday, uh, you could hear about uh, SIP uh, in, from, from, from JBO and, and two other friends from, from Microsoft. But let me quickly introduce you to system integrity protection uh, for, the, for those who are not uh, familiar. Uh, system integrity protection is a mechanism that is turned on on every macOS by default. And on macOS, even if you have root permissions, you are not a god. You cannot do everything you want with, with your machine uh, because of the system integrity protection that will prevent you from modifying some <clears throat> crucial operating system parts. Uh, for example, uh, even if you are root, you cannot uh, debug Apple signed processes or process with hardened runtime. Or for example, uh, you cannot uh, modify some files, some, some directories that are part of, of macOS. And when the system protection is turned on, the TCC uh, comes into play, the, the privacy framework that I'm about to, <coughs> about to talk about. So uh, when you open, for example, a terminal or any other application, and you'll try to uh, list address book or documents or desktop or get access to any other privacy sensitive resource on macOS, you will see a prompt. In this example on, on the slide, you can see that terminal, will, terminal would like uh, to access your contacts. And Apple wanted to make sure that even if you are a root user, you cannot skip this prompt. If somehow you are able to skip this prompt, uh, it means that you just found a TCC bypass. So even if you uh, are able to perform synthetic clicks and your synthetic mouse clicks on the OK button, nothing will happen. Apple wanted to make sure that physical user uh, clicks on the OK button and then the TCC permission is granted. You can find the TCC permissions in settings and privacy at security tab. And as you can see, uh, there are many, many um, resources that are now protected by the TCC. And TCC is really granular. Um, so if you go, for example, to, to automation, you can see that TCC is that granular that even you can specify which application could control which other application. And yeah, every major macOS version introduces new uh, TCC protections, new resources that are considered as privacy sensitive, so TCC is still in uh, huge development. Uh, from our hackers' perspective, uh, the TCC uh, stores the, the, the permissions in SQLite-free databases, and there is uh, one global TCC database in library application support come Apple TCC directory. And per each created macOS user, there will be a separate database. Uh, because, for example, one Mac can be used by, for example, two people, and one has uh, 
a, a browser. Two of them have, for example, Google Chrome, and the first one wants to give Chrome access to your camera, but the second user doesn't. So, you know, to, to solve this problem, for each user there will be a separate TCC database. And of course, those databases are protected by SIP, so even if you are root, you cannot modify directly uh, those databases without a special permission. Especially the, um, the, the global one cannot be modified. And as I said, uh, TCC uh, databases um, are SQLite free, uh, so you can open a SQLite uh, tool and do a select. And as you can see, we have foreign columns. Uh, the first one have the, 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 the permission name. Uh, the second one client has um, bundle identifiers. And sometimes uh, in this column, you can find a full path to the applications that have permissions granted. Our value, of course, and CSREC. And CSREC stands for code signing requirement. And you might ask, why are there um, question marks? And the question marks are there because uh, the code signing requirements are binary blobs. So, you know, you, you, you cannot read them uh, with, with just a simple select. But we will uh, decode them later. All right, now let's start talking about Electron and the problems with Electron. As you probably know, uh, a lot of applications now are, are Electron-based. So, for example, Slack, Twitch, Visual Studio Code, Discord, Notion, Teams, WordPress, or GitHub, but there are many, many more. So you probably, if you have Mac and you download desktop applications, you <clears throat> probably will have at least one Electron app installed. <laughs> and just to introduce you how Electron technology works, um, it can be considered as a, an embedded web browser with a website that runs in the context of that web browser. Uh, so as any other uh, website, a website needs to have an HTML file, CSS files, and JavaScript files. The problem starts uh, when the JavaScript files have a bridge to your system API. And Electron Apps needs that bridge because as they are applications, they maybe sometimes want to move a file or save a file or uh, write, uh, write something to a playlist or to a user default or something. So yeah, they actually need that OS API bridge. <clears throat> and as you may also uh, notice, uh, in the past there were a lot of vulnerabilities uh, that led to remote code execution. Uh, and usually it was about <laughs> executing a simple XSS, right? Cross-site scripting vulnerability. But we are not talking about web security on this talk. We are talking about macOS security. So let me introduce you to another problem with Electron applications. <clears throat> and the problem is that on macOS, popular uh, Electron applications require also granting them TC permissions. For example, install Microsoft Teams, and they will <clears throat> instantly uh, ask you for your camera access, for your microphone access, or screen sharing access. Those all you know asks are uh, about TCC permissions. And in back in 2019, I made a blog post uh, abusing Electron apps to bypass macOS security controls, uh, where I showed that Electron applications may be abused, and a malicious application may uh, take over the TCC permissions that have been already granted by users. So I showed in the blog post that. Uh, if you have a simple vulnerable Electron application, which as you can see on the, on the screenshot, has access to my camera, because that's me, and save something to the, to the macOS keychain, so it's a simple Electron application with, with, with this bridge uh, to system APIs, because we have camera access and keychain access. I proved that if you do echo with whatever you want and override the base HTML file, it will, of course, break the signature of the whole application because you modified one of its files. But what happens if you run this broken signature application? Nothing happens. As you can see, the code has been, has, has been injected, but you can see my arm, which means that the camera is still on. And you can see that the keychain entry is still reachable from that application. And why is that? The problem here lies with macOS. Uh, which verifies only 
uh, which verified only uh, the signature of the main executable. And as we are not modifying the main executable because we modified HTML file, everything is fine. And with that trick, uh, you could, for example, execute any uh, JavaScript code within the Electron Apps context. Uh, you could load a dynamic library, or you can spawn a calculator, right? But it's the past. Uh, Marco S. Ventura uh, fixed this technique. So now if you open terminal, unprivileged terminal, you go to applications and you'll try to, for example, modify uh, any file within the uh, Electron Apps context or with an uh, Electron Apps directory, you will see that the operation was not permitted and there will be um, <clears throat> a notification that terminal was prevented from modifying apps on your Mac. And that's good. That's, that's Apple's fix for the general problem of modifying app resources. Now when you uh, open an application for the first time, its directory is being locked, so only the application signed with the same developer ID is able to modify itself. That's reasonable because, for example, applications need somehow to update themselves. So that's, that's reasonable. So I wanted to uh, develop something new to get code execution within Electron applications. But now let's talk about TCC permissions inheritance. Uh, so TCC permissions inheritance is really, really complicated and led to many vulnerabilities in the past. And please make a notice that uh, this slide may not be always accurate because Apple is still changing the implementation of TCC inheritance. So, yeah, that may change. And generally speaking, which not always may be true, but generally speaking, when an application have when an application has private TCC entitlements, uh, the the children that are spawned by these applications. Uh, will not have the TCC permissions inherited. But when you download an application uh, from the internet and you grant the downloaded, for, for the downloaded application a TCC permission, it asks for, it asks for, for your permission, the TCC permissions will be granted to its children. Fortunately for us, uh, for us hackers of course, uh, Electron apps are the second case, right? So those are downloaded from the internet or from the app store and you grant the TCC permissions, so every, every children spawned, spawned by Electron application will have its permissions inherited. So if there was only a technique that doesn't break the Marco S. Ventura app protection mechanism, we could get the uh, takeover of the TCC permissions. And that's when I introduce my, my new tool called Electronizer. <clears throat> and Electronizer abuses the fact that Electron apps are, as I said at the beginning, native browsers with embedded websites. And every browser has a developer tools, right? You, you click Control I and you can execute JavaScript within the context of the, of the web page. The same thing is with Electron. You can spawn them with uh, inspect flag. And under the hood, the, the Electron applications will open a WebSocket to which you can connect and execute JavaScript code within the context of those Electron apps. And as I said, all the children spawned by those applications will inherit our TCC permissions. And Electronizer connects to this, spawns those applications with inspect flag, connects via WebSocket, and spawns you know, our malicious payloads. So let's take a look on uh, Visual Studio Code, which usually has access to your desktop uh, document download because uh, it's a you know, code editor, so it needs to have such access. Let's see the demo. So we open Electronizer with uh, inject parameter. We want to inject to Visual Studio Code with predefined script bind shell. So Visual Studio Code under the hood will spawn a bash shell and we can access the web sh the, 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 the shell via NC. But let's first verify that we cannot indeed access the, the desktop files. As you can see, the operation has not been permitted. But now let's use uh, the shell that we've just spawned. It's in the context of the Visual Studio Code. Visual Studio Code spawned that shell, so that's the children of Visual Studio Code. That's a, that's a child for Visual Studio Code. 
Now let's use uh, TCC uh, Checker Swift, which is a cool red teaming tool created by Cedric Owens, which enumerate directories to which we have already access to without raising any TCC prompts. So it's still. And now let's cut the secret TXT, and it succeeded, which means that we have been able to uh, successfully take over Visual Studio Code's uh, permissions. Now let's um, do the same thing but with Microsoft Teams, but now we are not get going to get access to files but to, to your camera. Uh, so we use the predefined script take selfie, and as you can see, tmp selfie.jpg has been created, and let's now open the, the file. That's me, which again <laughs> means that we have taken over um, Microsoft Teams uh, camera access. Uh, but what if the Electron application disabled inspect flag? You may ask. Uh, why those vulnerabilities I presented are, are zero days and are not zero days in the sa very same time because, because there is no such option for now to fix them. Even if you disable inspect flag, and let's like take Slack for example. If you open an npx tool and read up uh, uh, application Slack, you will see that the flag enable no CLI inspect arguments are disabled. So it means that uh, Electron applica um, I'm sorry, a Slack application will not respect the inspect flag. There is another problem, but with the TCC. Do you remember the question marks I told you about? If you use the following code, you can decode those code signing requirements, the human readable version. And the human readable version uh, defines the code signing requirement as, of course, set. And as you can see, this code signing requirement defines only uh, the information about the certificate that was used to uh, s sign Slack, right? There is no information about the Slack version. So you can use a typical downgrade attack uh, to to abuse the TCC. So let's inject Electronizer to an older version of Slack. So we have one Slack, the newest version already installed, but, but we as a red teamers, we, we're, we're going to deliver an old version of the Slack. And from the macOS perspective, that will be the same Slack. So Electronizer inject volumes because it's mounted slack and predefined script screenshot give it a while and as you can see in tmp screenshot we'll have our screenshot yeah so as you can see the screenshot has been opened <laughs> yeah, so regarding the detections, um, as now on macOS we have endpoint security framework, uh, the easiest way to detect such, such a technique is to filter for ES event type notify exec because in the uh, context parameter you will have all the flags passed to, to applications that are spawned. So if you detect there is an inspect flag used to, to spawn an election application, you may, you know, you, you may expect that something bad happened. So summing everything up, I showed you that mm, the TCC uh, permissions inheritance is possible uh, to children spawned, spawned by election applications. And even if we have Mac OS Ventura or any other modern uh, Mac OS version that already has the app protection mechanism, we can still uh, abuse Electron applications to take over the permissions. And even if you find a, an Electron application with TCC permissions granted and you want to abuse them, but the inspect flag is, is disabled, you can still, as a red teamer, uh, download under the hood an older version of the very same application with the inspect uh, flag respectable and still uh, take over the, the TCC permissions. So that's it for now. Thank you very much.